Don Peoples dead boat. Let's talk about it. So I think, man, we in a situation to where we got to discuss what the NFL might have to do with this whole Zach Stacy situation with this domestic violence. And, you know, what we saw him do to his girl was was very horrific, I should say, but it also had a lot of anger in it, you know, especially coming from a ex point of view. Obviously, they had a five-month-old child. The child was sitting right there while all this was taking place. You know, I can't imagine, you know, thank God the child's young enough to where they should not remember that experience that took place in front of them. But ultimately, man, what led this man to show that much anger? And what do I mean by saying the NFL it might have a lot to do with everything? Now, we all know professional sports, especially football, is one of the most violent sports known to mankind. As a former football player myself, I remember, you know, especially playing in the early 2000s, you know, high school ball in the late 90s. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember for real, like, catching concussions because, you know, they ain't checking on niggas and, and, you know, we smashing heads like rams out there, you know, really trying to knock you out, especially at that time. You know, it's a lot more safer now, for sure. But I think a lot of these players still experience a lot of traumatic brain issues. You know what I'm saying? You know, especially, like, you look at some of the cases recently, especially, like, with Junior Seau and, you know, just a couple of the other situations, the Ray Rice situation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just really seems like a lot of our ex-football players have a lot of pent-up rage. And they don't know when to turn it off. And they willing to take it all the way there. You know, um, you know the, the Greg Hardys of the world. And, and that's why a lot of the NFL players, if you notice, now that when they get done playing football, they want to go do some MMA or something like that to get off that aggression. Because football really puts that aggression in you. You know what I'm saying? And you really don't know when to turn it off. And they don't give you you know, classes or therapy or anything like that to wean you off that drug. You know, people taking chances out there playing ball, man, numbing themselves up, playing through pain, you know, all to try to chase the dream of getting into the NFL, you know. Um, Only 1%, less than 1%, you know, really make it out of all the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of kids that's trying to get in. So, you know, you really got to be a beast at what you do to make it to the NFL or really have a, a deep-rooted connection like a, you know, like a family member as a coach or something like that or, you know, something of that nature. But other than that, you really got to be a beast when it comes to, you know, playing professional football. Um, and I think a lot of the football players, they struggle because the, the, out of all the sports also – Football is like the most cutthroat, you know. You spend all that time trying to get to the league, and when you finally get to that league and you strap on them pads and put on that helmet, you might necessarily only be on the practice squad or never get on the field, and then all of a sudden your career is over. Like this dude is now famous not for making it to the NFL but for what he did to this young lady. And – now with him being on the run and this whole situation transpiring, you know, we don't actually know what took place to make him want to do that. But it just really seems like my man was dealing with a lot, you know, just pain wise. You know, you can probably tell that he's frustrated. He's not in the league no more. <clears throat> you know, he was briefly, you know, obviously with the Jets, you know, he was with the Rams, you know, um, you know, he's got to be frustrating not to be in the league and still feel like you kind of in your prime. You know, that's another thing about football. You know, a lot of brothers is out of the league and they still in their prime. You know, they thinking they should still be playing ball and, you know, just dealing with all that stuff, man, it really causes a lot of stress. And then you already know your women, they talking to you differently. You feel me? Um, you can tell he kind of like white girls and stuff like that. So, you know, you can, you can kind of, Imagine where he was at and then now dropping down to where he's probably working a nine to five, 
He ain't coaching nowhere or nothing like that. And just dealing with that frustration and used to banging them heads every day. You know what I'm saying? Like used to, <clears throat> you know, banging heads and 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 putting himself in harm's way and and doing all these things on the field and to all of a sudden how that took him from you and your life is just went back to normal and you don't have that violence in your life and you can't let out that rage. Like football, you know, it's a it's a stress reliever too because it lets you legally let out rage. Like if you got issues with anger and stuff like that, <clears throat> you know, play football because football is going to give you, you know, the outlet to be able to, you know, within, you know, certain parameters, obviously, but it's going to allow you to really bust somebody up, you know? So that is a good stress reliever. So when that's taken from you and now you're not playing football, you're not able to let out that aggression. Um, you're not getting your fix. Then, you, you, you know, when a situation arises and it's a situation, you know, you easily set off, you're going to go back to that aggression. You're going to go back to what you know, how to handle issues. You feel me? And I think a lot of our football players, even if they only in the NFL for a year or two, um, they need to come home to some type of therapy or some type of assistance, especially dealing with the transition, just like a soldier would. You know, a soldier's out in combat. They seeing death. They doing all these things and they have to come home and be regular. No, they need to go right into therapy or some type of counseling. You feel me? Like, and I really think that that's what needs to happen with former NFL players. They need to have a, psych a psychiatric evaluation. Make sure their brain waves are still good. Y'all been banging helmets and knocking each other out for years. Like you've been playing football all the way from junior high to now and everything stops. And now you have to handle the world and things, you know what I'm saying, the same, you know, like everybody else in society, you know, and, and that's hard to cope with because you used to be a star, you know, you used to handling things with violence on the field, and now everything has to be done the PG way. It's 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 hard to transition, man, and I, I pray for this brother, man, even though what he did, you know, I, I know it's, it's fucked up. It looks fucked up. I know a lot of people saying, you know, let's let's throw him under the jail, but hold on. You know, let's 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 understand where he's coming from. You know, he's an NFL castaway. <clears throat> you know, like I said, the NFL, you know, they just throw away their players. You wouldn't even know he played football. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So I don't want to just totally put him on an island and not put the NFL on there with him. You know, I think he has a lot of issues that he's dealing with, obviously, and he let those issues out on this poor young lady. And obviously what he did was not cool at all. And he should pay the price for it. You know what I'm saying? Obviously he should go to jail. Obviously he needs to have counseling and therapy and all those things to try to figure out exactly what caused that type of rage. Cause you know, you, you see, he was just tossing her like a rag doll. You feel me? So what made him cause, you know, that rage come out, you know, that's what we need to get to the bottom of, man. You know what I mean? Because obviously this is his ex, and, you know, listening to some of the things that you heard on that camera, it's like, you know, she might have did something to trigger this. You know, I don't know if she tried to, you know, jump in his new relationship or say something to his new girl or they still messing around. You know, it's two sides to every story. But I'm really curious what made that man be so enraged about that situation and the way he handled it, knowing that this situation, being that it's a white female, and, you know, dealing with that whole situation, like, you know, they're going to make an example out of this dude. And, you know, that's why he's running, I'm assuming, you know what I mean? Because he obviously needs to figure it out. And he's probably understanding what he did. It's crazy. But definitely, man, I want y'all to get in the comment box, man. Let me know what y'all think, man. Do y'all feel like this man need to be put under the jail? Or do you have a little bit of empathy <clears throat> knowing where he came from as far as, you know, dealing with the football and, you know, the trauma that that might have caused him brain-wise and stuff like that. Should we more so look into that part of it, or should we just say he's a woman beater and we need to throw him under the bus, put him under the jail, he needs to get the chair, you know, the whole nine and kaboot. I want y'all to get in the comment box. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Like, subscribe, hit the notification tab so y'all can tap in every time I drop a video. It's your boy, Don Peoples. Dead boat, gone.